Hello, this is Solar Business TV once again from Solar Power International 2018 from Anaheim. So now we are speaking with uh, Robert uh, Benedict, who is in charge of uh, sales in North America for... Uh, Americas. Ah, Amer ah, Americas. The Americas. The yes. Americas, yes. So I think uh, you were upgraded recently, yes? Uh, about a year and a half to two years ago. Uh, two years ago, I think. Oh, so, so the time is running so quickly because last time when we spoke, I think you, you were in it charge... It was about two years ago, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. So that's exactly. So, so Robert is one you know, of the most, uh, let's say, uh, knowledgeable guys here in the United States. And uh, that's why, Robert, I would like to discuss, first of all, about the U.S. market, yes, and then we can continue about uh, Recom. So first, uh, Robert, so since we spoke two, ta two years ago, what uh, changed, what happened in the United States on the solar market? Well, uh, initially, uh, if you speak two years back, um, first of all, very strong, very strong market, right, through, through 2017. And right at the end of 2017, we had a uh, potential hiccup in the market that could have caused some real problems. Uh, another tariff, uh, again, the government's got get involved with the solar industry and uh, put together another tariff against uh, the solar industry. Um, it caused all the major uh, developers and uh, EPCs, buyers of modules and other technologies, it caused them to buy, overbuy, um, which in essence took uh, 2018 on a semi spin downward. How I mean that is because the manufacturers already had manufactured, over manufactured, probably a good 20%. Uh, it made 2017 great, but 2018 then it slowed it down. And that whole psyche of things are a little slower started seeping into the minds of our developers and our EPCs, and they let it affect them. Because if they would have just gone full, full bore, they would have probably come out with the same kind of results. Why I say that? is although uh, Recom, as a, a supplier, we were affected because the EPCs, the developers, weren't doing as much, we, because we had projects, were able to work on those projects, do the O&M part of the projects, uh, once we had purchased them, and then we sold one, which probably made us a better year than uh, we would have had in 2018. So, in the end result, it was a good year for us, but not for the industry necessarily. And how do you see now the prospects, you know, uh, for 2019 and 2020? Because uh, even there was quite a lot of skeptical people, yes, about uh, uh, the new president administration, but uh, what I heard, yes, that uh, there is like a huge pipeline even for the utility scale, yes? Yeah, um, a very large pipeline. Well, first of all, because 2020 is supposedly, and I will say supposedly, the end of ITC. So uh, many companies are going to do a very similar thing uh, that happened during the cash grant, and uh, which was they're going to get, uh, they're going to invest in the projects up to five, they're gonna put 5% of the money down for in the 2020 end of the year, before the end of the year, so that they'll be probably doing projects in 21 and 22 that orig uh, started in 2020 or 2019, 2018, wherever they originated, they still won't be completed until probably 2022. But I have a sense that there is a possibility that ITC gets moved again to another four years. Don't, don't know yet, and every time it comes in front of the government, uh, somehow they've been able to add it uh, to their um, financial package for the, that, that following group of years. So let's say 2020, uh, we're late in the year, it doesn't happen. 2021 comes along, we start the 5% uh, downgrade in our ITC. Uh, any time to, during 2021, they could re-add uh, another four years. Possibly. And what about uh, you know recent announcement and uh, recent introduction of uh, the bill in California uh, with the target of 100% uh, by 2045 for the state? How uh, it changed, let's say, or how it influenced you know the whole uh, market? 
market, but also you know like uh, thinking amongst the investors, financial guys, amongst the installers or other players on the market. I actually believe that all of them have been thinking anyways that we are still. Uh, although not technology-wise, what I'm saying, we are still very early stages as an industry, meaning that technology has a long way to go right now, a long way to go. Uh, as in the case of Recom, uh, with the hetero junction, we're taking a new step in technology. It isn't only the cells now. Now, it's a technology within the cells, the combination of the two, to t take another leap forward. and. So my view is, and you asked about what 21, 22 is going to look like, it's going to look great. Because I think by 23, we are going to take a quantum leap, the first quantum leap in solar that the amount of manufacturing from the manufacturing side of the business will not be able to be kept up with what the requirements are, what the needs are just because it'll take a quantum leap, the pricing, it just won't make sense not to have solar. Exactly, so uh, I hope, uh, Robert, that uh, next time we don't speak in two years, yeah, but quicker, yeah? <laughs> yes, much quicker than two years. <laughs> okay, so I think, uh, Robert, that um, you updated us on the market and just uh, very shortly on uh, Recom. So what is like, you know, your milestone your go that you reached, let's say, during the last uh, two years? And what is your goal? Uh, not only in North America, but also in Americas, yes? Because now we are in charge of Americas. Yeah, I mean, ideally, we would like to be doing half a, half a gigawatt in uh, this region. Uh, now, we have not gotten a very strong foothold in uh, Central or South America. Um, we do have a very nice uh, foothold here in the Americas, I mean, in the United States. So I think that what's really going to happen is this new technology is going to bring us many of the companies that we have been working with but haven't got that next step. We're not the first supplier. We're the second or third supplier for them. But with the new technology and the value proposition that comes with it, we will then become their first supplier and it, half a gigawatt is nothing. Okay, so uh, last thing, uh, you attended our gala in Beverly Hills? Yes. Yes, and how did you enjoy? Oh, amazing. First of all, uh, props to Tom, Tomas for all the effort he has put in for the solar industry. Props, big props, because he has helped move and get people to believe more in the whole energy of solar from the personal side, not from only the business side of it. Do you still remember what is our flagship sign? Yes, thumbs up for thumbs, solar. Thumbs up for solar. That yes. was Solar Business TV together with uh, Robert Benedict, uh, who is uh, working for Recon for Americas, and is one of the most you know connected and knowledgeable solar guys here in the United States. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.